Raffles by E. W. Hornung, a series of short stories dramatized for radio by David Buck, with Jeremy Clyde as Raffles and Michael Cochran as Bunny. A costume piece. Filthy rich, that's what they say of me. Those pot-bellied poltroons you dignify with the name of aristocracy. Those sleek, secondary degenerates you honour with the name of merchant bankers. Those sanctimonious time servers who call themselves politicians. <laughs> Filthy rich, they call me. We were attending a meeting of the old Bohemian Club, Raffles and I, and the speaker on this occasion was the remarkable Mr. Rubin Rosenthal, better known to his associates as the Diamond King. Once I was little better than a slave. Now I keep 20 kaffirs in my household. And when I say jump, by God, they jump. I can't think the committee could have had any idea what they were letting themselves in for, inviting this self-inflated idiot to speak. Shh, Bunny. I wouldn't have missed it for ten pounds. Look at the brute. Look at that diamond on his shirt front and its twin on his finger. Raffles, don't go getting any ideas. Hands have killed... Yes, Jens, these fingers have felt a man's backbone snap in their grasp. Filthy rich. <laughs> How many of your bloated princes could boast a £25,000 diamond on his shirt ramp? Eh? And another to match it on his little finger. They are excellent Look stones, to be sure. Go on, feast your eyes Curious on them. purple You will bleed. never see the likes of them again. I'm sure he's right. They must be worth a pot. Yes, I've quite set my Take heart on them. Man here with one hand tied behind my back. But who does the Diamond King choose for his bodyguard? Only the best. Step forward, Samuel, Slammer, Purvis, the champion of champions, come on. My kitty aunt, look at the man. Yes, I lost a fiver on Slammer once. I bet on the other man. What happened? To the other man? Still in hospital, I believe. Do you enjoy being my bodyguard, Sam? Yes, Governor. I regard myself as most fortunate to have uh, been uh, picked for such a gaff. <laughs> gaff? Uh, situation. Is that right, boss? Quite right, Slammer. Now, gentlemen, I must bring my address to an end. I hope you will remember what I have said for a long time to come. And in case you require something to jog that memory, let me leave my calling card, my initials, perhaps, and on that wall, I think. My revolver, Slama. Of course, give it to me. He can't be serious. He is, Bunny. Where I don't trust I the aim of a man who's drunk what that clown's put away tonight. Oh, the hell with dignity. Get under the table, quick! The Diamond King! That's the name! And don't you ever forget it! No man gets the better of me. I was fated to hear that challenge, Bunny. Especially as I'd quite set my heart on those sparklers already. There's an air of inevitability about the whole business. I must go for them. It's my sacred duty. But Raffles, we're, we're not too badly off at the moment. There's really no necessity. Necessity? Necessity? Does the writer only write when the wolf is at the door? Does the painter paint for bread alone? Must you and I, Bunny, be driven to crime only by hunger, like Tom of Bow and Dick of Whitechapel? <laughs> you pain me, my dear friend, and you needn't <laughs> laugh like that. Because you do. Art for art's sake is a vile cliché, but it sometimes applies, and that time is here and now. But, Raffles... Uh, my motives, moreover, are absolutely pure, for I doubt if I'd ever be able to dispose of such peculiar stones. Uh, but one thing's certain. If I don't try for them, I shall never be able to hold up my head again. Well, we shall have our work cut out. Well, it'll be no soft thing, I grant you. But what of that? Man's reach must exceed his grasp, dear boy, or what the Dickens is a heaven for. 
I'd rather we didn't exceed ours just yet. It would trust me for that. I'll see you through, Bunny. There's surely a way of tackling this one, if it can be found. I shall start by watching the house day and night for at least a week. It's not something I relish. It's a lonely business at the best of times. Can't we watch together, Raffles? Two eyes are as good as four and take up half as much room. Don't look so offended. There'll be plenty for you to do when the time comes. You'll have your share of the fun, and if we're lucky... What? A purple diamond. All to yourself. It was ever thus with Raffles. While he was there at your side, fixing you with his bright eyes, the mischief in his soul entranced you and carried you along upon a wave of carefree enthusiasm. But once he was gone, euphoria gave way to a clammy doubt. I realized I scarcely knew the man. Whole areas of his life were quite unknown to me. I recognize it now as the instinctive secretiveness of the inveterate criminal. But in those days, it rankled with me that matters of common concern were made mysteries. I was the secondary partner, to be sure, but I was irked that Raffles made so little attempt to disguise the fact. It was in this state of mind that I decided, a day or so later, to undertake a little work on my own account. I, too, would keep a nocturnal vigil by the Diamond King's house. It was quite the largest house, I believe, in all St. John's Wood, positioned well away from the main thoroughfares and bus routes. So still was the place that I had a great mind to walk in boldly and learn something of the premises. In fact, I was on the point of doing so when I heard a quick shuffling step on the pavement beside me, and turning, faced the dark scowl and the dirty clenched fists of a dilapidated tramp. A penny for a poor man, Governor. Certainly not. Be off with you. I could say the same to you. Eh? You fool, Bunny, you utter idiot. What are you doing here? Raffles! Oh, that's right. Tell the whole neighborhood. Give me away at the top of your voice. Oh. No, wait, Raffles. I mean, wait, old man. Oh, Sam Toffs. Too mean to part with Aitney. Never had to beg and scrape for a living. Huh? Wait, please. Give me a copper or two, Bunny. And take your time about it. Huh? Oh, uh, yes. Now, listen carefully. I'm going now, and I want you to follow me, but for heaven's sake, keep your distance. And don't speak to me again until I speak to you. Uh, right -o. Oh, Lord bless you, Governor. You saved a poor man's life, so you have. You'll not regret it. And he was off again. A decrepit vagabond with his hands in his pockets, his elbows squared, and his frayed coat tails swinging raggedly from side to side. I followed him as he directed. He made his way to the Finchley Road, where he took an Atlas omnibus. I sat some rows behind him on the top, but not far enough away to escape the stench of his vile tobacco. After several stops he alighted, crossed the road, and disappeared up a dark turning. I pressed after him, and was just in time to see his coattails as he plunged into a still darker flagged alley to the right. No one else was about. I saw him glance up and down, then approach the door of a tall building and turn a key in the lock. As I drew near, he spoke. Come in. It's dark. Mind the oh. step. There's stairs to the left. Now follow me. Oh. Oh, where are we? Looks like an artist's studio. Smack on target, Bunny. Although it's sadly bare of works of art, alas. There's the canvas I'm always going to make a start upon. Can't find the right model, you see. Ah. And my landlord despairs of me, says I haven't an artist's temperament. But I pay the rent and I'm a good tenant, so he leaves me alone, by and large. Uh, here, help yourself to a Sullivan while I get cleaned up. Oh, thank you. You, uh, you never told me you went in for disguises? Uh, no, Bunny, I've... I've treated you very shabbily all round. But there really was no reason why I shouldn't have shown you this place months ago. Except uh, you couldn't quite bring yourself to trust me, I suppose. Now, you know that's not true, Bunny. But consider. Circumstances were just conceivable in which it would have suited us both for you to be in genuine ignorance of my whereabouts. 
Oh, I'm an ass, Raffles. Look, uh, please don't imagine... Yeah, my dear fellow. Now, see, uh, these cupboards are full of all sorts of toggery uh, for my models, if you understand. In some cases, a good disguise is half the battle, Bunny. Our present exploit has all the earmarks of a costume piece. Here, huh? don't waste your time. Choose yourself something for tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Why, uh, w what do you mean to do tomorrow? The trick. The trick? Well, I should have told you earlier, but I thought there was no point in having you sit about with your pads on, waiting to go in, getting more and more nervous every minute. Here, uh, pass that towel. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, don't you think you'd better tell me about it now? My plan? Hmm. Well, it's not exactly subtle, I fear. There'll be no difficulty getting in, I'm sure. It's getting out again, may flummox us. They keep a regular hours, to put it mildly. There's always someone up and about, though Rosenthal and his immediate retinue don't usually return until about midnight, and then his habit is to stay up, drinking and quarrelling till broad daylight. I don't believe those unfortunate kaffirs of his ever get to sleep. Poor devils. There's something odd there, too, Bunny. What? I know the Bantu. They're a proud people, a brave people. Well, how on earth has friend Rosenthal managed to subjugate their spirits so completely? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not using some sort of drug to keep them quiet. Surely no man could sink so low. He can, and does. It's an old slaver's trick. By the Lord, Harry, but I'd love to give the Yard some excuse for visiting the Rosenthal residence. For all his faults, Mackenzie had put things to rights. I'd like to see those Kaffirs. By George, I'd like to see them. Get a fair crack of the whip, eh? A most unfelicitous phrase, but uh, yes. I'd almost sacrifice the diamonds for that particular pleasure. <laughs> Tell me, um, you, you spoke of quarrels... Quarrels. Hmm. Oh, yes. All is not well between Reuben and Slammer, it seems. Uh, this is something we may be able to turn to our advantage. Huh? I overheard one alfresco squabble wherein the famous bruiser accused our quarry of being an IDB. You know what that means? Illicit diamond buyer? Exactly. Slammer threatened him with the breakwater at Cape Town. Whatever that might mean. Anyway, it serves as another addition to the list of Rosenthal's unsociable habits, but it's his social habit of drinking, which is our best bet. My basic plan is to get in early, doctor the whiskey, and then lie low until they come back and... But uh, do we have any guarantee he'll drink the whiskey? <laughs> Only the law of averages, old fellow. And if the plan goes wrong? We can expect him to write his initials upon us. In lead. It's not very inviting, Raffles. I think of the diamonds, that purple glow. I'm thinking of the likelihood of an untimely death. If there's to be shooting, it won't all be on one side, I assure you. Now, let's kit ourselves out. It was twenty minutes past eight the following evening when Raffles and I took up our position in the shrubbery of the house adjoining Rosenthal's. From this vantage point, we could watch our quarry's house under cover of a wall, just high enough to see over. Thus concealed, we remained for an hour, watching a pair of bow windows with vague shadows flitting continuously to and fro across the lowered blinds, and listening to the drawing of corks, the clink of glasses, and a gradual crescendo of coarse voices within. He's dining at home tonight, Raffles. I think not. He's later away than usual, I admit, but I, I think not. Shouldn't we postpone this till tomorrow? Wait, a carriage. It's turning in. You know what that means? It means that our luck has turned too. The door of the house, it's opening. Here they come. Slammer. Rosenthal, that diamond's well in evidence. And with them, the ladies, God bless them, that's better still. Well, what now? The servants will be clearing away. See their shadows? 
and the drawing room windows open onto the lawn at the rear. On with your mask. Here, uh, let me... By Jove, oh boy, you look about the greatest ruffian I ever saw. Lord knows what effect you'll have on the Kaffirs, but you certainly scare, scare the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> now, if the worst comes to the worst, don't forget your white chapel. Nah, I shan't forget, Guv. On second thoughts, better sulk or feign dumb and leave the dialogue to me. Now, please our stars, there'll be no need. Now, are you ready? Quite. Got your gag? Yes. Shooter? Yes. Then follow me. In an instant, we were over the wall. In another, on the lawn behind the house. There was no moon. It seemed the very stars in their courses had veiled themselves for our benefit. At the rear, the house was unlit. I crept at Raffles' heels to some French windows which gave on to a shallow veranda. These shouldn't give us any trouble, I think. Child's play. Now, let's allow ourselves a little light, eh? Uh, do the honors, Bunny. No, my friend. What? Allow me. Even as my blood froze, the light came. A good score of electric burners glowed red for a fraction of a second, then rained merciless beams into our blinded eyes. When we found our sight, four revolvers covered us, and between the unsteadiest pair of them, the colossal frame of the Diamond King shook from head to foot with wheezy laughter. <laughs> Good evening, boys. Glad to see you at last. Shift foot or finger, you on the left, and you're dead. I mean you, you greaser. <laughs> I know you. We've been waiting to welcome you, haven't we, Slammer? Yes, Gov, we have. Hope you approve of our little charade tonight. Quite difficult to arrange, but it was mighty successful. It must have been. Else you wouldn't be here. <laughs> oh, I've been watching you all week, you scum. Plucky smart you thought yourself, didn't you? One day you come a-begging, the next time shamming tight, and the next you're one of them old pals from Kimberley would never come when I'm in. Isn't that right, Salama? Yes, come quite right. But you left the same tracks each day, you buggins, and the same tracks each night, all around the blessed premises. <laughs> Didn't he slip? Yes, Gav, he yes, did. Yes, yes. And now I think it's time I put an end to your unpromising oh, careers. Oh, Shut up, you slots of women! And Slammer, hold your screw. Keep those cuffers quiet. Punch a few heads. Right. I can't stand noise, but I'm taking aim. Oh, you shut up, you poor old frat, you understand? Here, Gav. Why not call it quick? Eh? Shut up, Bunny. Now, Governor, don't excite yourself. It's a fair cop. You keep still, damn you. We don't even sweat to know how you brung it off. Only don't go for to shoot, cos we ain't armed. Swap me God, we ain't. And what's that got to do with it? Murder. That's what to do. Killing an unarmed man is murder by the law of the land. Ha <laughs> ha but you're a knowing one. Ain't he, Slammer? Yashgav is. He knows all the old saws and sayings. Don't he, Slammer? Yashgav I know one you won't care for, mister. Set the thief to catch a thief. What? There. How'd you like that, eh? Why, you can't... Look at him, eh? He's gone all pale. Guilty conscience, I calls it. Oh, yes. Hey, what do you mean by that? You dog's awful. Hey, spit it out or by Christmas. I'll drill you here and now. Here, Governor. Stand aside, you. At what price that bright water? Hey, that bright water at Cape Town. The IDB Diamond King. What's that? You heard me. You said it again. The breakwater. That's what you've got to look forward to. No, 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 the other. IDB? Well, now I'm not an educated man, but I know what them letters stands for. Where did you get hold of that? Uh, illegitimate. Why, you no, damn no, 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 And uh, no, no, that's be. No, well, we've got no, a wide no, choice no, of words Mr. there. Mr. No, no, uh, but to answer your questions, no, Mr. ID, no, no, in the spirits you asked, no, 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 the man who told me well, is the one your worship's dancing with at present. No, what? Well, I can't answer that, Your Reverence. The walls. Is it? No, no, no. You've been blabbing. I you never must... said a word, Gav. He's lying. Funny colour your friend's gone, Gav. I'll kill him. He's mine, Slimmer. Get ready to run, Bunny. I'll choke him. Stand away. Oh! 
Now! <laughs> Thank God, straight through the window. There he goes. Under the light, damn you! Got him! Now you him, boss. There he goes. Harder him. Jella, hold the other one. He's on his game at least. He's out of the wall. The game. Look out. He's fighting back. My God. He was armed after all. You fool slammer. Didn't you check his pockets? Now, Garvey, he looked quiet. Made now. fools of both of us. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But we haven't got him. But we got his friend. And by God, he shall suffer for this. Where is he? Jala! Here, boss. Where is he? Where is he then? Where's the other one? Uh, Mr. Slammer him say, follow big man. You miserable dog. Wring your scrawny neck. Come here. As this unenlightened scene was being played, I was creeping from the room on my hands and knees. There had been a moment when all attention was focused on the escaping raffles, and it was a moment I took with alacrity. I dived into the darkest corner of the room and crouched for a few moments behind a heavy sofa. Slammer! Where the hell are you, Slammer? This further diversion enabled me to creep into the hall outside. It was shaped like an L, with the promise of a staircase round the hidden corner. On hands and knees I moved towards this corner, praying there would be stairs, and that the stairs would be deserted. Thank God, there were stairs. Yeah! But they were not deserted. Yeah! They were guarded by a young Kaffir, who at the sight of me yeah! began to wail like a banshee. It was a noise fit to wake the dead, and I was sure it would alert Rubin and Slammer in the room beyond. His pupils, I noticed, were unnaturally dilated, and I remembered Raffles' words on the subject of drugs. I drew my revolver on him, but could not bring myself to fire. But the very sight of it turned him into a gibbering idiot, and I let him be while I took the stairs three at a time. I turned into the first room I came to. It was an empty bedroom, though the light was on. At least I believed it to be empty, for when I turned, Lord. I found myself confronted by the looming, threatening figure of the most consummate villain I had ever beheld. His yellow eyes rolled in his head, and his thin and dangerous lips curved like the gash of a wound across his dark, unshaven jaw. I drew back in terror, <gasps> and so did he. It was then I realised that the creature from which I had shrunk was myself, my disguised self, reflected in the long mirror of a wardrobe. Oh, my God. Hearing footsteps mount the stairs behind, I threw myself into the wardrobe and pulled the door to. There I cowered for some time, an hour at the very least, shivering and cursing my fate, my folly, and raffles. Raffles, most of all. Raffles first and last. Then there was the sound of voices. The door of the wardrobe was flung open and... Yes, mister! He's here! Yes, 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 I was dragged from my hiding place and hauled downstairs, an ignominious captive. Back in the drawing room, the whole company was gathered as if to witness a recital. In the centre, the massive figure of Rosenthal, a heavy pistol in his ham-like fist... <laughs> Bring him closer. Uh, look God. at him, the bro. Did you ever see such a vicious-looking creature? Quiet, you! Lucky any of us is alive to tell the tale. Quiet, I said, woman! You shut your mouth before I shut it for you. Shall I send for the priest, Gov? And lose my sport? Not on your life. Now bring him over here. And the rest of you stay where you are. Nobody leaves this room. There's a bullet in this revolver for anybody who tries. You two, Slammer, where the hell do you think you're going? Yeah, he's gone, Governor. You leave it where it is. I want him armed. Shooting an unarmed man is murder, but if he's armed, it's self-defense. Your friend said that, didn't he? Well, I'm quick to learn. Oh, but Governor, I'm going to deal with this filthy scum in my own way, dear, yeah. Rufus. Stand aside, I say, Jala. You take him yes. by the arm. You hold him still against the door, yes. if you value your skin. Sure, but... <laughs> now, let us see what you are made of, my friend. Oh! So an act like this in a circus once. Oh! And I remember thinking what a steady hand the man must have. How dangerous it would be, I thought, if he had been drinking even a tot or two before the act began. Oh! Or half a pint of whiskey. Oh! Oh, boss, steady boss. You want to know how much I've drunk tonight? 
Two pints, two pints, and my hand is as steady as a rock. Oh! For God's sake, Governor, you'll kill him! In self-defense, Slammer, as a warning to others, I only want to shoot round and round him. Oh! Like that? Circus fashion! Round and round! Oh! Now then, what's all this? Oh! You! Who's the householder here? Uh, he is, Constable. Uh, yes, I am. My name is Ruben Rosenthal. And that gun, sir? Is it yours? Uh, yes, it is, Constable. I was firing, I might add, in self-defence. Mm, you are just in time to apprehend this criminal here who forced his way into this house to burgle it. Is this the man you're accusing, sir? It is. And uh, it's a pity you didn't come an hour ago when we could really have done with the law. We do our best, sir. But we're only human, like the rest of you. Now you, Constable, let's have no funny business. Hold out your wrists, nice and steady. Huh? Come in here when it's all over. You might find us murdered in our beds. For our discoveries, madam, I'd make with a heavier heart. I'll take your gun, if you please, sir. Oh, of course. Very well. I shall see you, uh, gentlemen, at Marylebone, I don't doubt. Do you need any help, Constable? No. I don't fancy the gent means to give much trouble. No, no, I'll, uh, I'll come quietly. I was led handcuffed across the lawn and out of the five-barred gate. The clocks were striking midnight, I remember. It was another hundred yards before I dared speak. How on earth did you manage it, Raffles? Luck. Pure luck. You can drop the stage police now, I think. <laughs> I had the luck not to damage myself when I dived through that window, the luck to get clear away in the darkness, and to cap it all, the luck to have these togs among the rest in my private pavilion in Chelsea. The helmet's one of a collection I made up in Oxford. I was a lawless fellow in those days. I always knew it had come in useful. Yes, well, the whole thing's been more of a costume piece than I intended. The handcuffs aren't locked, by the way. Oh. That last shot nick you? Uh, no, no, no. Only a burn. I hoped I wasn't wrong about the Diamond King. I guessed he'd want to play with you a little before killing you. Gain us valuable time. All the same, I came back as fast as I could. Oh, I'm glad, AJ. I sent the handsome on to good old Mackenzie with a message. He's as keen as five folks since he got back in harness. Old IDB Rosenthal's place will be alive with detectives by now. So, at least we can claim a moral victory. A moral victory, my dear rabbit, is no victory at all. Alas, the fates have not destined me to be the possessor of those amazing purple sparklers. No, we've not gained much credit from this business in any sense of the word. But by Jove, Bunny, we're jolly lucky to have come out of it at all. In A Costume Piece by E. W. Hornung, dramatized for radio by David Buck, Jeremy Clyde was A.J. Raffles, and Michael Cochran, Bunny Manders. Reuben Rosenthal was played by Geoffrey Matthews, Slammer Purvis by John Hollis, Jala by Alton Kamalo, and other parts by Jabu Umbalo, Natasha Pine, Jane Leonard, and Graham Blocky. The Raffles theme music was composed by Jim Parker. Sound balance was by Keith Perrin, and the production was by Gordon House. <laughs>